Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall, waiting to explore with you what is often puzzling and always slightly beyond rational understanding. This story is real, and what happened goes back almost a hundred years when Joseph Conrad recorded it. Then, even more so than now, the word Congo had acquired sobering connotation, sobering indeed as a commercial trader was to discover. Chaos. Chaos. Wake up. Wake up, man. What is it? Listen. What do the drums mean? How should I know? Go back to bed, Carl. I can't. I can't sleep. I'll ask my call. You stay inside the house. That's an order, Carl. I don't want to lose you. mystery story, The Warriors from Luanda, is adapted from a story by Joseph Conrad and was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor. It stars Bob Dryden and William Griffiths. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and x lax I'll be back shortly with Act One. Man is gregarious. He likes the company of others. When men are deprived of human companionship, they undergo subtle changes. They hold conversations only with themselves. Solitary confinement is brutal punishment. It requires strong nerves to endure it. Mental change causes physical change, and a man released from isolation looks different and sounds different. Keep that in mind as we meet the director of the Dutch Great Trading Company. He is saying goodbye to Kaertz and Carlier aboard his steamer. Have you any questions, Kaertz? No, Herr Director. You are in charge? Carlier takes his orders from you. Is that understood, Carlier? Yes, Herr Director. This uh, is not Amsterdam. It is the Congo. The jungle is dangerous and enveloping. I have left you with ten men, all employed by the company, but responsible to you. They will keep the trading post clear. Mikola and his wife have survived here for years. He keeps the storehouse with its cloth and trinkets for barter. I will rely on him. The responsibility of the post is yours. We expect you to collect ivory. The company is generous with rewards for agents who are industrious. I am proceeding upriver. I will not return for six months. By then, Herr Director, I will have filled the storehouse with tusks. Good. You have ample food, and if you treat Kabila's tribe with decency and consideration, his hunters will bring you game and produce. Is there anything more? No, Herr Director, we understand perfectly. Then I will say goodbye. We will step ashore. Goodbye, Herr Director. Well, God, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> I feel like an overlord. A raised house with a veranda that overlooks the Congo. Ten men to do the work. Nicole and his wife to manage the storehouse. What more could we walk? And the ivory tusks everywhere in exchange for a piece of cloth or a trinket. Six months, Kalia. Six months and we will be rich. You'll be rich. Your turn will come. And after you've made your fortune... I will meet your boat in Amsterdam and we'll celebrate our wonderful adventure in Africa. Look, look 
how the sun casts a bar of gold across the river. <laughs> Surface doesn't seem to move. I haven't seen Makora since... Oh, he's coming down to us. Well, Makola, we have been admiring the view. You must be careful, Tuan. It is a dangerous river. Ah? Huh? The crocodile is very swift. You see there? It looks like a branch. It does not move downstream. Crocodile, you turn your back and he is upon you. That is why our house is on stilts. We fear the crocodile more than any other animals in the jungle. Just how do we go about the bartering, Makola? I don't speak the native language. I suppose I could manage the sign language. I, I speak the tongues. The natives come with tusks. I speak with them. You make the decision, Tuan. The director says that Skibola... Is that right, Kibola? Yes, he is chief of a local tribe. Very friendly. Does he supply tusks? No, no, Tuan. His people hunt only for food and have a village. They do not wander through the jungle. It is the wandering tribes who hunt for ivory, and they bring the tusks to our trading posts. And they exchange ivory for cloth and trinkets? Mm. Knives, bells, beads... We have many things. That's extraordinary. The director speaks to me about the ten men, Tuan. Oh, he did? And what did the director have to say? Tuan, it is very hot here. Men must be made to work. If they plant seeds, you will have plenty of produce. Over there was a clearing for growing vegetable. There? Mm. Good heavens, it's a thicket. Do you say there was a garden there? Mm. Agent before you had men clear the land. He also had the house built, didn't he? Yes, Tuan. He was an uh, artist. He spent many hours painting on canvas. Kids, look up there on the hill behind our house. Close to that huge Spanion tree. Ah, uh, a cross... A tilted cross. Is that where the first agent was buried, Makola? Yes, Tuan. Chewed up by a crocodile, Makola? No. No, Tuan. A fever. Well? Mm. They are no better than first agents I have to bury in ground. Oh, do you like these men? They seem nice men. You should be the agent. Perhaps. Perhaps one day. But the director pays me well. We will see. The Congo is not good for these men who come from where it is cold and where heavy fog creeps over the shore and the land has no sun. This is our land. And the land is their enemy. Last the sunset. Day after day after day after day. Like a cauldron of red hot metal pouring over the black jungle. And that silent, deadly river. <laughs> Sometimes I think I shall go mad, Gaius. Only a month now, Kalia. The steamer will be along in a month. <sighs> If it weren't for my daughter, Melly, you wouldn't catch me here. Uh, and if it hadn't been for that brother-in-law of mine, I, I, maybe I'd still be in the army. Or any place but here. He got me this appointment knowing I'd be miserable in the heart of this blasted continent. Did your brother-in-law persuade you that you'd make your fortune as a trader? Did he urge you to leave the army? No? That's neither here nor there. I see. What do you see? Were you discharged from the administration of telegraphs? Is that why you're here? No. I left to earn a dowry for my daughter. She's 17. She's all I have. Merely lives with my sister. My wife is dead. When I have saved enough for her dowry... Ah, she'll never have it. You were supposed to collect ivory. Supply is pitiful. The 
trading station looks abandoned and the men do nothing. That will do. Shall I remind you, Collier, that I am the agent and that you are my assistant? Oh, yes, sir. What will you tell the director when he asks to see the ivory? Oh. And asks about the garden and the fencing and the new landing stage that the men wouldn't work? Hold your tongue, Carl. If you weren't in charge... Yeah, but I am, and don't you forget it. I'll get down to Macola's hut and tell him to come here to the house. Well? Look. Look down there, Kaird. Huh? I've never seen them before. In front of the storehouse with Macaulay and his wife. Fierce-looking devils, aren't they? Uh, I wonder where the tribe comes from. i better go down. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Macaulay's wife is coming up here. Macaulay seems to be quarreling with her leader, pacing back and forth and gesturing. They don't appear to be friendly. Macaulay sends me to one. Oh, well, speak up, woman. What is it? Macola says you are not to leave house. They are dangerous men, Tuan. Get your revolver, Kalia. No, Tuan. They also have guns. I will not have Macola threatened. He will barter with them. Do not go down there. They have brought tusks. Well? Oh, they are fierce men, Tuan. Well, who are they? Where do they come from? From the coast, from Luanda. They are warriors. Makola will talk with them, but you stay here. The natives from Luanda are dangerous. I won't be intimidated by ignorance. I think you will be, Kaird. I will. Against ten men armed with spears and guns? They'd leave us dead. Our director wouldn't like that, would he? Shut up. Now, when Makola has gotten rid of them, tell him to come up here. He will come up here, Tuan. I, uh, I should thank you, Kaertz. Not that I would have obeyed you. When I give an order... But you didn't, because you're afraid to go down there. <laughs> so am I. But I admit it. Ah, uh, the men are leaving. Mm. And Macora has uh, gone into his heart. Look, there's his wife coming up from the shore. She circled the clearing. <laughs> She's afraid, too. We should always carry our revolvers with us. I intend to. <laughs> You cannot, Makola. The director will be angry. He will never know. I cannot stand up to the men from Luanda. They threaten all of us. They have guns. But the trader and the assistant... There will be no trouble. Oh, they will know. That may be. I am loyal to great trading company, but also to you, to the children... The warriors threatened to kill us. Oh, is it to be done? I have arranged it in my head. It is better you do not know. Better for them, too. A hundred years ago, the jungles of Africa were impenetrable. It truly was the dark continent. Two men are isolated there. What happens to them will unfold when I return shortly with Act Two. From the beginning of recorded time, man has been driven to explore and to plunder for survival. From England, Belgium, the Netherlands, explorers lay claim to the riches in undeveloped regions. And they were followed by traders such as Kaerts and Collier, who manned outposts on jungle rivers to barter for ivory. Two isolated men who await Makola and his explanation about those unfamiliar warriors from Luanda. Takes his own good time, doesn't he? The sun's gone down. That's a blessing. It's positively balmy. Can't be more than 95 degrees. 
Perhaps we should go for a swim. You're a fool. Congo gives me the shivers. For heaven's sake. Huh? What is it? Isn't that smoke? Huh? See there, off to the right. Isn't that smoke rising above the trees? Yes, it is. Three columns of it. Akola? Yes? Just one carrots, yes? What's that over there? Smoke? Yeah, I can see that. Fire. Villages burn. Shouldn't we take our men and try to help? No. It is too late. Is that Gibola's village? I do not know. It is close by. And you don't care? Gibola's our friend. Let's call out the men, Kayats. Ring the gong. No, no, Herr Kayats. When villages are burned, natives have been driven out. No one will be there. Who drove them out? Could be the Luanda. The blighters who were here late this afternoon? Uh, they are bad men. Did they threaten you, Makola? We argue about tusks. Oh, they have ivory? Very much. Do you like get more ivory? Yes, certainly. We haven't collected very much in the past five months. Of course I want ivory as much as they have. Then I arrange for it. The director will be pleased. I should hope so. The director also asked about fencing and new landing stage. The men he left with me simply won't work. Well, maybe, maybe, Tuan, if you show them good time, tomorrow they will work. Give them party tonight. <laughs> what a wonderful idea. You have to give them a party for doing nothing. Isn't that novel? <laughs> Palm wine has gone sour. I give it to them and they enjoy themselves. Tomorrow, they will work. Well, go ahead. Why not? Uh, you you stay in house, yes. It is dangerous. You stay with me, Kalia. One of them might go off his head. That's an order. Oh, you and your orders. Ridiculous. You have fever, Tuan. You stay quiet. Fever will burn away. I will take palm wine to men. You do not leave house to Why should we have anything to fear from our own men? Let me point out something I have said before. I am the agent in charge here. And you are my assistant. <laughs> the person in charge is Macola, and don't try to deny it. You will not call me ridiculous in front of a servant. I won't stand for that kind of insubordination. If it happens once more... Yes, what will you do? I'll discharge you. You mean throw me out of our castle on stills? This vermin-infested hutch of a platform? You're welcome to the whole place. I'll head downstream to the coast. Well, you may do what you please, but you won't survive a day in the jungle. I've warned you, Kalia. Now go to bed. Take your quinine and go to bed. You may go to hell. It couldn't be worse than this. Chaos! Chaos, wake up! Huh? There's trouble in the camp. You know, who, who, what is it? Well, go back to bed. Oh. That's a yell for help. Go down there. Take your revolver. Ah, it's just one of the men drunk on the palm wine. Oh. Did you hear that? Go down there, Chaos. That's one of our men. Makola! You're in charge here. That's what you tell me all the time. What kind of man are you? Intelligent enough not to risk my life for a uh, dead native. And I'm... Uh, uh, oh, I'm dizzy. Uh, Fever. Forget what you heard and go back to sleep. We will find out in the morning. Oh, I, I have to go to the, to the camp. Uh, do what you please, but... Remember the cross on the hill. He died of fever. That's right. Do you prefer a bullet? Ah, you're up, Kalia. You look better. Where, where are the men? Well, they will straggle down shortly. I'll call again. Oh, there's my caller. Come up here on the veranda, Makola. He doesn't appear to be excited. Maybe he didn't hear the gunshot. When did you wake me up? It was almost three o'clock. Yes, one cares. 
They are the men. They, uh, they went last night with the coast people, the Rwanda. What? They deserted? They, uh, they go away, Tuan. But they can't. They're company men, employed by great trading companies. They were no good. The director will be furious. He will like the ivory. Ivory? Uh, down there, Kayats. In front of the storehouse. Uh, good Lord. I never saw such a collection. The Rwanda returned and... You say barter with them, and they have many tusks. Uh, you wish to see it one? Uh, good work, Makola. I will certainly mention this to the director. Wonderful. Are you coming, Kaya? Oh, yes, yes, I'm all right. You should stay in bed here, Tuan Kaya. You have fever. The sun is hot. Oh, first, first, I must see the ivory. That's, that's why we came to this desolate place. Oh, such tasks, Makola. I, I will weigh and store for the director. What did you have to give for it, Makola? Mm. No regular trade. They bring ivory. I tell them to take what they want. The Luanda need carriers very badly. Our men were no good here, Tuan. No trade, no entry in books. All correct. You gave them a... Our men? You exchanged the company men for these, these tusks? You sold them into slavery? The men were no good to us. Oh, you scoundrel. What a vile thing to do, sell our men for ivory. The director will hear about this, I swear it. I've never heard of a more despicable act. You have no more duties here, Mikola. You and your family are to leave at once. You are very red, Herr Kertz. If you are so irritable in the sun, you will get fever and die like our first chief. We will return to the coast, to my people, Makola. No. You heard Herr Kayer. He spoke out of anger. It was wrong to sell the men. No. The chief of the Luanda would accept nothing else. If I do not agree, he and his men kill us. Take everything. We have the ivory and we are alive. Do not worry about Herr Kayer. He will not drive us away. Oh, what will the two men do now for food? They have rice things in tins. The steamer will be here soon. Oh, let us travel with the director down to the coast, Makola. I no longer feel safe on this outpost. Where have you been? I went up to the camp. You're mad. Have you no sense? You have fever. You're weak. Do you want to die? I... I found one of Gabola's men lying dead in front of one of the workmen's huts. What? The way I see it, Makola carried the palm wine up to the workmen. They got drunk and fell asleep. That's when that tribe from Lawanda pounced upon them and carried them off. One of the men from Gabola's village was there and stayed sober. He protested... I was shot and killed. Ah, uh, what will you do now? We can't touch the ivory, of course. What a frightful thing to have done. Made slaves in exchange for animal tusks. It's very wrong, Chaos. They were walking down from the house, Makola. Of course. Now you will see. Kalia found one of Gibola's men lying dead in front of a workman's hut. You tell Gibola to have him removed. Yes, Tuan. What do you intend to do with these tusks, 
The sun is very strong here for tusks. I must weigh them, place them in storehouse. They are very heavy. <laughs> that really is a splendid collection. The Lawanda are great hunters, Twan. Yeah, and marauders. No, when I have stored them, I will go to Gibola as you have ordered. I will help you, Makola. Uh, oh, one uh, man could not carry so big a tusk. I, I can't see a woman doing that work, kids. All right, if I give them a hand. We'll do as you please. You are not uh, well to uncall you. Oh, the fever will break. Uh, can't leave these beautiful pieces of ivory in the sun. Uh, you, you will kill yourself. Uh, no matter. I've given up. I don't expect to leave this place alive. <laughs> First put ashore. Yeah. Uh, well, perhaps tomorrow the steamer will come. Oh, that's a great store of ivory cats. It's a shame we should get credit for it. I have been giving that a good deal of thought. You need some credit. The clearing is over one with rank grass, the, the fences... That are... will do, Six Dahlia. months and you haven't accomplished a thing. The stations are disgrace. No ivory, you've lost the company of workmen, you've discharged McCullough, but he's still here. I'm sick and tired of listening to you talk about position. Why don't you face it, Kayers? We're like two blind men in a dark room. But I intend to emerge from that dark room. Yeah. With credit, you will be dead. Credit? Yeah. Credit for the ivory. Oh, you said you wouldn't touch it. I've changed my mind. Selling the workmen into slavery was despicable. Uh -huh. Macola did that. I'm still horrified by it. But the man he sold to the Lawanda were company men. They worked for the company. They were paid for their work. So the ivory is company ivory. I see. And Macola and his wife? He too is a company man. If ten workmen choose to desert... Preferring to become carriers for the Lawanda? <laughs> yes, I begin to see... Well, you're not an absolute fool after all, Kayats. As compensation, the Lawanda brought us a fortune in ivory. The men were worthless to us and to themselves. Yeah, we've done them a favor, and the Lawanda have rewarded us. <laughs> the logic is peculiar. Well, who will know the truth? The director has seen worse things done on the quiet, believe me. I do, and I'm relieved. Earlier, I mentioned the effect that solitary confinement can have on a man. We will soon discover the fate of Kaerts and Collier when I return with Act Three. We're unfolding a story written by Joseph Conrad, who in the year 1890 commanded a small Belgian Congo steamboat. He contracted fever, dysentery, and in his words, everything became repellent to him, men and things, but especially men. From that experience, he wrote this story about the disintegration of a trader and his assistant. Three more weeks have passed, and Makola's wife is concerned. The two men quarrel and break things, Makola. I have heard that. Stay away from their house. They have revolvers. They are no longer responsible for what they do. Oh, they are starving. They have rice. But nothing else. Gabola's people do not bring game or fruit. They are weak and they are starving. I do not care. I have no respect for them. 
They do not belong here. Have pity on them. No. Leave them alone. Time will tell against them. The steamer is late. The director is busy with other stations. I do not know when he will arrive. Mm, the men will be dead. Then Gibola's wish will be granted. We need food. We'll rot a fever and starvation. You sit there. You're in charge of this pest hole. Do something, Kayats. The steamer oh, will... for all you know, the steamer's passed us by. We have to do something. I have ivory for the direct... Ivory. Blast the ivory. And the jungle. Burn it down. Exterminate the natives. That fire to the whole continent. Oh, you are crazy. You sit there mourning over that picture of your men. I warn you, Kaya. Free me from this place. Free me. I'm so sick. Uh, the solitude. It is absolute. Everything has gone out of me. Images of home. Gone. Those I loved recede into the distance. Become become indistinct. The great silence of the wilderness, its hopelessness, envelops me. I've lost the will to resist. Death stalks us, and I have no will to resist. No will. You're alive. Get away from me. You've slept all day. Good. Get up now. Don't lie there and rot. I fix supper. I can't choke down any more rice. There's coffee. Then bring out the sugar. What are you holding it for? Now only a few lumps left. I'll bring it out. It's for when we are sick. Sick? I'm sick to death. Bring out the sugar or I'll strangle you to death. I forbid you to speak to me that way. You what? I'm your chief. Chief? Who's chief? There's no chief here. There's nothing here but you and me. Fetch the sugar, you blundering idiot. Shut up, Kalia. I dismiss you. You miserable scoundrel. Why, you flabby, good for nothing civilian. Put down that stool. Make me. Stop it! Come back here! Open that door! Open it, you coward! He's mad! Revolver! Where is my revolver? I have to control my nerves. If you don't bring out that sugar, I'll break the door down! I'll show you who's master! I have to get out of here. The window dropped to the ground and run for the river. Past Macaulay's hut and the storehouse. Run. <laughs> My legs. This morning I couldn't walk a yard without groaning. Run. Run for my life. He's mad. I'm waiting for you, kids. You can't escape. Better jump in the river. You come near the house, I'll kill you. Come on now. You're out there someplace and I'm waiting for you. What is this all about? This madness. What did we quarrel about? Sugar. A lump of sugar. How preposterous. Ah. I will remain hidden behind the house. Where are your players? I'm coming for you. I hear him. And with, 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 which way do I run? To the left or to the right? Yes, you are. I hit my shoulder. He, he'll fire again. 
I don't hear him. Kalia! Makola! Makola! Yes, Tuan, yes! Help! Help! I, c- I can hardly walk. Help me to the front of the house. Yes, Please, yes, yeah. Tuan, here, hold my arm. He, he tried to kill me. He, he get me back to the porch. A lump of sugar. Civilized men quarreling and killing over a lump of sugar. Ah, oh, thank you, Makula. Yeah. What was that? It's Herr Kalia. He's been shot and killed. But my shoulder. The gunshot. Let me. He is dead, Makola. Yes, Tuan. I don't understand. He came round, threatening to kill me. We collided in the dark, and there was a shot. And my shoulder... You are not shot, Tuan. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I will see to Herr Kalia, Tuan. <laughs> that miserable brute, that pompous, lazy, insolent misfit... <laughs> He's dead. (laughs) I'm well rid of him. Threatening me. He didn't learn very much in the army about obedience. There was mutiny. The director will understand. Twan, Twan, is is this your revolver? Uh, Yes. Yes, that is mine. There is only one revolver, Twan. Where is his? I don't know. He came after me to shoot me. I I will look. Now what will I do? Bury him, I suppose. Order Macola to build a cross. Place him next to the first agent. I killed him. Killed in self-defense. Tuan, I did not find a revolver near Herr Collier. It was in his room. This is his revolver. I... I shot an unarmed man. Herr Collier died of fever, Tuan. Yes, I... I think he died of fever. Bury him tomorrow. For tonight we leave him on the porch. I am dreaming... Kalia is dead. What difference does that make? Thousands die every day. I'm at peace with myself. What if I, and not Kalia, was dead? But I'm not. I must wake up. The mist is all around me. Penetrating. Silent. White. Deadly, carrying my guilt through the jungle, calling me to justice, calling me to help, 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 help! He's gone mad. He runs wildly to the shore. The steamer, catch! He's gone. He runs into the jungle. Oh, how do we explain what happened to Herr Kert? He went mad from fever, ran into the forest. Both men are gone. That is all the director will need to know. And we go downriver to the coast with the director? Yes. The company sends stupid men to the station. I want no more of them. They offend the natives. We do not collect them of ivory. You have a great store of ivory, Makola. Thanks to the Luanda. And to the workmen, who are now their slaves. Come aboard, Makola. Tie your canoe to the ladder. Well, I'm pleased to see you. I am honored, Herr Director. Uh, may I ask where Kayotz is and that uh, assistant whose name I've forgotten? Uh, Collier. Oh, yes, of course. Well? 
They are dead, Herr Director. Ah. The usual, Macola? Fever. Herr Collier died of fever. He is buried. And the agent? Herr Kaerts became wild in the head and ran into the jungle. Madness. He cannot survive. And this station, has the work been done? No, Sir Director. I fear to smart imbeciles. The company men did not work. Last full moon, they leave station. They join Luandas. This unlucky station, Tuan. Well, there's nothing wrong with the station. It's the fools the company sends me to man them. Any ivory? You come ashore to see. Macola. It's a marvelous collection. Heaven's name, how did you collect such superb tusks? I bought her for it, sir. Yes, well, you bartered well. I see you still have half the supplies I left with you. What tribe brought you this wonderful collection? Luanda. Ah. I understand. And it was with the Luandas that the workmen went? Yes, sir. Amusing. <laughs> we, uh... Think alike, Macola. Yes, sir. Both of us have a shrewd understanding of real values. I think that you could become an outstanding agent for a great trading company. I'll have my men load the ivory aboard. And then you and I will talk further? Yes, sir. Strangers in a foreign land isolated and destitute. Kayerts and Collier gave up respectable positions to become ivory traders in the middle of equatorial Africa. Unqualified, they degenerated so swiftly that in six months they died, both violently. Greed drove great trading company and greed drove the two men. Only a heartless man such as a director or a shrewd man like Makola can survive the challenges of exploitation. I shall be back shortly. Conrad wrote this tragic story in 1895. The days of colonial exploitation have ended. Those who hunt and sell ivory are no longer cheated with gifts of cheap cloths, glittering beads and trinkets. Now they get value for what they sell. This is advancement of a sort, and the dignity we formerly accorded only to each other is now, we hope, accorded to all mankind. Our cast included Robert Dryden, William Griffiths, Joe Silver, and Joan Arliss. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.